Hi everyone, thanks for staying on and listening to our rubbish on VR. But um, anyway, just before I start, people know what VR right? is, right? Yeah. Virtual reality. Virtual reality. The headsets. Headsets. That people wear. Crazy things like this. I'm going to take that as a yes. Perfect. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, otherwise, I'm going to have to get my other presentation out and show you all about what it is. But yeah, so we'll start off. Um, Bertie is my business partner. Um, obviously, we've got quite young faces, so we are a startup company. Um, Bertie's coming straight out of university, which is fantastic. So we've kind of got a little bit of a story to say about being a startup and being graduates and things like that. So um, and saying, you know, it's a little. Know, it's quite hard work, but as long as you're um, motivated enough, it's, it's not that hard. It's all right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, when you're starting up a business and you are going full into it, like a full-time job is 40 hours a week. When you're running your own business, it's easily 80 hours a week, and you will develop a crippling addiction to coffee or Red Bull or Coke or something with caffeine in it. And it means that you have to keep this up, otherwise you'll have a day off and you get these awful, awful headaches. And you lie in bed and it sucks. But... Great fun, really rewarding having your own business. I think we can both agree with that. Definitely. Right, so shall we do the presentation? Yeah, I think so. Go for it. Cool. So our company is called Virtual Umbrella. This is our logo, nice and big for you. So we essentially, we both really enjoy virtual reality and we were both being freelancers in this field. So Sam was working on like the event side of it and I was providing marketing consultancy to virtual reality developers. And we realized that why be freelancers when we can legitimize this, start our own business, get the tax breaks, and it just makes life a lot easier. So virtual reality, two people coming together, going to put this under an umbrella. So it became a virtual umbrella. And we saw this niche in the market. There were no companies out there who were working exclusively with virtual reality developers. So that's where we came in. And after talking to a couple of developers, we've got friends who make VR games. And they're saying, look, I don't want to have to worry about business or the marketing or the PR. I just want to be a developer. So we figured, you're an amazing developer. Continue being amazing. Let us worry about the rest of it for you. Yeah, we're doing the hard work, hard work basically for them, which is a lot of fun. Um, and like I say, we've been going for seven months and we've learned a lot in that process. And obviously, we've made a lot of friends within the industry. Um, we are now working our absolute butts off <laughs> every single day with um, lots of different studios, uh, companies. We're now working with America as well, which is amazing. Obviously, they've got a huge big bubble out there in VR, um, and they don't already always want us in, but we're uh, working hard to work with them. And now, obviously, Europe as well. So there's a lot going on out there. Just got to tweet about it and look up on Twitter, and you'll find it <laughs> yeah. pretty much. Um, the next slide moves. There we go. Yeah, so that's basically us, with, as we've already said, Bertie over there, and I'm Sammy. Um, as I said before, I used to work for a gaming company um, that are based in Farber, right down in the south, um, who were venturing into virtual reality, and I kind of got the bug for it and decided, yeah, this is something I really want to do. Um, I learned how the coding worked or the tech side of things so that I can go to um, a company that have never even, even looked at VR before and go, hey, can you explain to me what this is? Because I have no idea. Um, which is fantastic. Um, and I've also got an events background as well. So we do a lot of VR events um, down south. Um, so we uh, do a lot of that as well. So we are bringing the community together. Yeah, which much. Um, so I'm Bertie. I'm the managing director. I'm the one who stays awake at night worrying about the money. <laughs> so profit and loss. Are our clients paying us? Um, when you are running your own business, you'll quickly come to learn that you either pay someone to sort out your invoicing for you or invoicing sucks because you hate having to chase people that you've built a really good relationship with. So it's like, hey, yeah, I'll do this for you for 200 pounds. And then 30 days later, it's going, look, I like you, but you still haven't paid me. And I don't want to have to get a bailiff to come to you, but please, please pay me. <laughs> and you're trying not ruin, you don't want to ruin a relationship because as soon as you ruin a relationship, they might give you that 200 pounds, but there's no chance they're giving 200 pounds in the future. Money is important. Yeah, money is what keeps <laughs> businesses going. Money is what keeps us in a flat, and it's what keeps the lights on. So it's exactly. very important. Um, so yeah, so just a really, really quick um, situational analysis for VR. Um, there is a prediction that it's going to be worth $150 billion uh, by 2020, which is amazing. So if we can at least make 1% of that, that's pretty cool. Um, we can go out for dinner tonight. That would be quite nice. Um, and there are hundreds and hundreds of startups in the UK um, that are now focusing on uh, VR. 
um, either venturing into it or have been looking at it for the past year or two, um, but are now are openly saying we are working on VR, which is great. And there are also some companies in there that have been doing it for 20 odd years who are now jumping back out going, hey, hang on a minute, we've been doing this too, let us talk to you about our games and our content. Um, and of course, there are some other uh, startups out there which we are dying to find um, because obviously we want to work with them, we want to talk to them as well. Um, yeah. And then there's also some really big players who have joined the, the VR game. So you've got the likes of Facebook, Samsung, HTC, but I'm sure you guys have all heard about this in the news at some point, unless you've been living under a rock. Let's go. Cool. Okay, so when it comes to marketing in an emerging industry, it's a bit different to just saying, doing a standard kind of gaming background. And we find, we basically put together a list of the things which we think are really important if you want to really set yourself up or if you really want to set your, your game or your VR experience up for when this big bubble sort of emerges in February when the Oculus comes out, when the PlayStation VR comes out and when the HTC Vive comes out. The first one is your expert and your, influ and your influencers buy in. So these are your experts, the people who are talked to by journalists these are the ones who do the interviews. These are the ones who have got 10,000 followers on Twitter. These are your guys who your community and your friends will trust, and they'll trust their opinion. So you might not know these people, but it's essential you get them involved early on. Um, and then obviously you have your community buy-in. Um, so as we've said before, we do a lot of community events. Uh, we do something in London called VR in a Bar, where we basically bring all our developer friends together. We put them in a bar, we give them some money behind the bar, we let them have a drink, and then we bring the community in. So we let the public come in, they just try out all the games and experiences that we have, um, and they have a really good time, and they just generally just enjoy themselves. Um, and that's what we want out of it. So obviously for VR, it's not going to go anywhere unless we um, you know, bring it to the public, um, and that's a big part of it. So if you are you know, interested in VR, you should definitely have a look out for these community VR meetups because they're amazing and you'll meet some brilliant people in the community. Um, and it's a big part of what we do. Um, we love doing it. Um, we've got a really nice group around us now. Um, and it's just we want to go to more and look at more people that are doing it as well. Yeah. That's a big part of um, the side of it that you need as well. <laughs> and then once you've got this, once you've got your experts, once you've got your community around you, that's when you have to really start pumping out your mainstream buy-in. So that's where you'd, you'd hire Indigo Pearl over there to make sure you get all, that, all those publications out there and you really push your streamers, you push the YouTubers, the people who are going to get people that you don't know to buy your experience or download your app. And it's just so important. So I've put down there press advocacy, and that's finding journalists. Like, so you get tech journalists from Wired or Engadget. Who, or, um, there's a guy from The Telegraph who's really great as well. Like he's a really good games reporter called Keith. Guardian. Keith, Guardian. Yes. Keith Stewart. Keith Stewart. There we go. <laughs> but people like that, people who you can, sort of, you can go, okay, look, I know this reporter. I've got a fairly good relationship with him. Convince him to write about you or convince him to tweet about you because nowadays when you're a journalist, it's not just about your articles you write online or it's not just about the newspaper or the magazine you write for. It's their whole brand, like a whole journalist brand. So if they tweet about you, do a Facebook post about you, that's going to get so much more recognition than Joe Bloggs over there did a tweet about you, for example. And again, as we put there again, VR events, just because that's a big part of it. Um, and we want to encourage this adoption because we think it's great. Um, I love working in the industry um, and I love showing it. Um, I love giving that first person's experience going, hey, have you tried this? Nope. Do you want to put something on your face? Yeah, okay. And then, you know, you know they, they might be the people that buy this headset next year, or they might look into the content, or they might start going, actually, I want to make games for this. Why don't I look at it? Because it's something that a lot of people haven't looked at yet. Yeah. Um, obviously, within our community, we all talk about the same thing all the time, and we think, oh, yeah, 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 we're, you know, we've seen the same games, but there are a lot of people out there that haven't yet. Um, yeah. So we're just encouraging that. No, on, top, anyway. <laughs> so on top of this is also the fact that, with, especially with virtual reality at the moment, it's got so much press, there's so much stuff going out in newspapers. When it comes to your mainstream adoption, people are wanting to try this. We were recently working for a company called SciTech Games, who've got a game called Crystal Rift. We're working for them at EGX. We had a three-hour queue 
four days straight, and this EGX was 75,000 people, we must have pushed through about 7,000 people over these four days on four VR headsets. So people are really wanting to try this, and it's about encouraging them, going, look, you want to try VR? Try my game. If you haven't done it before, try what I've got to offer you, because then from that moment on, whenever they try VR, or if they talk about VR to someone else, it's going to be your game with your experience that sticks in their head. It's going to be your thing that is there. That was the thing that, that popped their cherry for VR, <laughs> essentially. And it's something they're always going to remember. And it's something that if, you know, if, you're in a if you're in the pub and someone goes, oh, have you heard about that VR thing? Oh, yeah, I tried this game. And it was amazing. And I really want to talk about it now. It's the same with my first experience on, on, in VR or my first experience with the HTC Vive, where I fell over a table physically. Um, luckily, it didn't hit my head, but that's something I will take to somebody that has never looked at it before and gone, oh, so what's your experience like? Tell me more about it. Um, and that's, again, where the adoption comes in. Yep. Match. Cool. So we've got this, this issue with virtual reality at the moment, which you really need to be aware of, that we're coining the content conundrum because you've got a nice bit of alliteration there. And this essentially, it's where you've got companies who are producing really bad and really quick VR experiences for like Google Cardboard. And people are trying this on and they just go in, okay, this, this sucks, VR must suck. And it's not that, it's, that's not the case at all. There's some amazing VR applications out there. There's some things which genuinely will blow your mind. There's a film called Henry. It was made by Oculus Story Studio, which is like Oculus's film background, essentially. And it makes people cry. It makes people wear, go into virtual reality. And they're so blown away by this film that they cry because it's just so amazing. And it's a shame that there's, there's so many like just sort of small, quick projects out there which are killing it. And just sort of they're, they're completely killing that vibe. And yeah, the way we're looking at it is if we're going to get this mainstream adoption, we have to make sure we're getting people trying quality content and they're trying something that's really amazing. Because once you've seen something amazing and the benchmark's up here, if you play something and it's not quite as good, you're not going to get turned off. But if it's your first experience and it's bad, you'll get, you'll get turned off VR straight away. A lot of our developers that we work with um, are really dealing with this at the moment because obviously they're the ones that are showing off the content. Um, and if they hire in staff or people that aren't 100% um, aware of how to show off the content, they, you know, they worry that they're going to be the ones that go, oh, did you try my game? Yeah, I did try your game, but I didn't really like it. And then, again, it's, a, it's something that you don't want to happen. Um, we get hired a lot for staffing events like things like EGX because we know how the technology works and we want people to experience the games well. Um, mm. But it is a real big problem at the moment. So hopefully when developers go into it or you know, companies go into it, they have a, a good day to sit down and go, right, OK, this isn't going to take a day. This isn't going to take five minutes. This is going to take a long period of time. Yeah. Can you get the video working? I can if you want me to. Um, this this video about. came out a while ago, um, but I don't know if it's going to let me. You've Probably broken not. the internet. I didn't break it. I didn't break it. Now VR works. I just don't know how the slides work. Um, but basically, if no, it's not going to work, I don't think. No. My lady's just. Okay, never mind. But yeah, basically, he, um, this, I think this came out uh, last year, and the guy was trying it in a uh, shopping centre, and a lot of the time, uh, a lot of VR content's shown in, you know, like Westfields and things, and I think he was trying a roller coaster for the first time, and he was pushed halfway through and panicked completely, and he's like falling over and everything. It took two people to get him up. Um, and it's just obviously really funny to watch, really entertaining. Um, but from his side of view, he's never going to touch that again. Um, never. That, um, I don't blame him because I wouldn't either if I'd fallen <laughs> over a million times in VR on a roller coaster. But it's just a little bit of an example of how it can go very, very wrong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which is what we don't want. We don't want it to go wrong. Um, and we want good people to be presenting and developing and showing it off in the right way. So hopefully we can push it. And this is what we're talking to our, our clients about as well. Um, especially the smaller studios that are just looking into it now. It's a big part of what we want them to consider, just going, hey, think about it, how you're representing your games and how you're showing them to the public, because that's what they're going to take and that's what they're going to remember. Okay. With virtual reality at the moment, as we mentioned earlier, it's still in a period of development. So February 2016 is when everything's going to really kick off. And it's when 
all these developers are sort of going to stop being a community and they kind of go, hey, actually, I don't want to tell you about my ideas in case you pinch them and make money off them. So we, it's really important to kind of get in the game early. So if you're sort of thinking about dabbling in VR, now's the time to get in there because now's the time when developers are going to be open to sharing. They're going to be more than happy to help you. Say they've got a workaround for one pain in the arse bug that you can't seem to fix and another devs out there and they've sorted it out. Come February, they're going to be like, no, the longer I can delay your game, the more chance I've got of making money out of this. Whereas at the moment, because it's not a money motivated market, it's an innova innovation motivated market, people are open to sharing, collaboration, and it's really good. And then the other thing which we really, the reason we really say get in there now is where we've got these companies like Samsung, Facebook, even Autodesk, who generally are a business application company, they've now released a virtual reality game engine. And it's these big companies who are coming in with swathes of money and they've got all the resources in the world and they're coming along going, we're going to take all of this sector and this is going to be ours. But if you can come in, and even if you're just like one developer, one sole developer with one really cool idea, you have to come in and you have to get your flag in the ground and you have to make sure people know that you're there. So whether that's killing it on Twitter from your company account or just smashing it out on YouTube and making sure streamers are aware of you, just about getting your flag in there, and if someone comes near you, a bigger company who's trying to do the same thing as you, just like, nah, this, this is my area. This is, this is my little square. You can have everything else around me, but I'm going to stick with this. Right. <laughs> oh, have I skipped? No, I haven't. Sorry. Um, yeah, so the honeymo honeymoon really won't last forever. Um, when we went into the industry, like Bertie was saying before, Everyone was really, really happy. Everybody wants to tell you all about what they're doing. They want to share everything with you. You know, if you go on Reddit, you know, what, I've got this problem, please help me with it. Um, that's going to sort of slowly start to stop because obviously people do want to finish their games, get them out there and start monetizing, which is obviously the next part of VR. Um, so yeah, so from like our point of view, um, as a marketing company, um, we are now sort of... Um, you know, making sure that we have our brand ready, um, looking at our business development and obviously our company in as it's going as it is at the moment. Obviously, we are a startup and we've been running for seven, nearly eight months now. And we've changed so much in that sort of period of time um, just through who we're working with and the demand of work as well. Um, but yeah, so things are going to start changing very, very quickly. Um, but that's just the way it goes, really. Yeah, one thing, you, when it comes to virtual reality or any emerging technology or any emerging industry, you have to be really, really pragmatic. You have to be adaptable to change because, for example, we are all out there like, okay, no, that's fine. The only headsets are the Oculus Rift and, at the time, the Project Morpheus. That's fine. We'll focus on that. We'll make sure we've got a, a strategy in place of how we can do one of our clients' games and do the whole release strategy. Then HTC come along and go, hey, we're releasing the HTC Vive in collaboration with Valve. And that came out overnight. So we wake up and we're like, oh, crap, everything's completely just changed. That's a whole extra strategy we have to worry about. Completely new way of working around, completely new audience. So you have to make sure you're really adaptable to change and that when something does come your way, you don't just crumble and you can hold on to that pressure and keep going. We've definitely learned that over the past couple of months. <laughs> We've had to work very, very quickly, and the demands change as well, depending on the clients we work with. So one week, they'll just be working with one headset, and the next week, they'll be working with five. So it's always changeable, always changeable. So we don't sleep much, um, and we're always on Twitter, checking that we haven't missed anything, which is quite important <laughs> for us anyway. So essentially, when it comes to emerging technology, you have to approach your industry from a completely different point of view. You can't go from a, this is a mature industry. It's like gaming for consoles is a mature industry. It's, it's been around for decades now and people kind of know what's going on most of the time. Well, they know how to approach a problem. With VR, it's a whole new medium. It's a whole new way of communication. You've got journalism, you've got gaming, you've got business applications. The possibilities are endless and you have to make sure you are aware of this. So the way, the things that we, mainly concern ourselves with is the value of being an honest startup. So it's like the guys from Indigo Pearl were saying, honesty is genuinely probably the best policy out there. If someone's VR game, they think it's perfect. They've been working on it for, for months and they're so happy with it. And you try it on and in five minutes you're feeling sick. 
you, like, you know that's going to crush them a bit inside, but you have to tell them because otherwise, as soon as they, they release this, they're going to get absolutely destroyed online or they're going to get killed on like the Reddit, Oculus thread, stuff like that. Um, we've also, do you want to talk about the brands and understanding it with developers? Yeah, of course. <laughs> if you want me to, I could jump in. Um, yeah, so brands are a big thing as well. Um, there's a lot of different, there's a load of content out there um, and there's a lot of um, developers out there as well. So on a day-to-day -day basis, we get contacted by a lot of um, different brands and they'll come to us and go, hey, um, we have thought about VR, we want to do, for example, Red Bull. Uh, Red Bull looked into VR recently and did something for one of their air shows. So, for example, we'd have a company like them come to us and go, hey, yeah, we're looking into VR, um, but we don't really understand it. Um, we don't really want to know how it works, but we just want this product at the end of the line. Um, so we then go to one of our studios or one of our developers that we work closely with and go, hey, we've got a really cool project. We can talk that tech lingo to them because we understand it and then go back to the brand and go, hey, this is possible. We can do this for you. Um, so we spend a lot of our time looking at different brands, different studios and put them in the right categories and put them together pretty much. Yep. And then the final point, if I can remember correctly, I think this is the last slide or the second to last slide. The final point is continuously learning. Like, with an emerging industry, the landscape is always going to be changing and developers are going to be a bit scared. Brands are going to be a bit scared. You have to make sure you're there, you're always learning, you're always reading up on the new things because you want to be as valuable as you can. If you want a company to keep paying you to do stuff for them, you have to prove your worth, prove you're valuable. So whether it's being sh basically saying, look, I understand Unity better than anyone else out there, or I can make Unity do things that Unreal couldn't even dream of doing. You have to make sure that you are there and you are valuable. Yep, so obviously, if you want to learn any more about us, um, what we do, who we talk to, all that kind of stuff, please follow us on Twitter and obviously visit our website. But of course, if there's any questions now, please give us a shout and we are here for pretty much the rest of the day if you want to talk to us. I run away? Ah, be bold. Go for it. Yes. We love it. Mm -hmm. This headset here, we a company called Merge. It's nice and purple. It's um, a mobile headset. Um, they have just done a deal with game. Um, so in not, I think it's the end of this week or next week, um, you can pre-order this um, and you can get it before Christmas. So there's a lot of uh, mobile headsets that are coming out which are obviously going to be available sooner and a lot more affordable. Um, so this is going to be like $49.99, um, which isn't too bad considering, you know, up from Google Cardboard, um, a foamy nicer version. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, sorry, couldn't hear you. So with the PC base, with the basically wired headsets, the big, the big ones. We, we can all speculate on price for days, but until these headsets are officially announced with a release date, we won't know for sure. Oculus, for example, could say, yes, we, the, the Oculus Rift is going to cost $399, and then HTC could come out and go, and ours is going to cost $389, and then the day before the official release, Oculus could just go, actually, no, we're going to make it $200, and just completely undercut and completely change the, change the landscape. So we can't speculate on price and it'd be crazy for us to even think about trying to do it because something would go wrong and we would get screwed in one way or another. But in terms of mainstream adoption, Palmer Lucky, who's the guy who created the Oculus Rift, he's the guy that Facebook gave $2 billion to, essentially, for a headset. He doesn't think that it's going to be total mainstream adoption with this first round of headsets is going to be like when the Oculus Rift 2 comes out. That's when people are going to be really wanting to try it. But a company that we've been working with have just done a bit of research and they say 50% of people in the UK now know what virtual reality is and they want to try a headset. And you know, for the first rendition and like for something that hasn't even been officially released yet, 50% in the UK isn't bad, is it? You could pretty much say you're getting there with your mainstream adoption. And I think it yeah. was 50% know about VR and 33% are considering buying VR when it comes out. So I can't remember the fact of how many people there are in the UK, but 33% of them wanting to buy a headset isn't too bad, I don't think.
for your first try round. Hey. Yep. Yeah. Um, personally, um, I really, um, obviously Oculus was the first one I ever tried. Um, we had the opportunity to try the consumer version in June, and it's amazing. It's really, really nice, really comfortable. Um, but my personal favourite is the HTC, just because it's um, that next step. Because um, obviously you can move around in VR, and I think that's, for me, for the way I am and the content that I want to try out, I think that works much better for me. But, I mean, Oculus are still doing a great job in respect to the headwear. Um, and it's just basically seeing who's going to pick up first, I think, honestly. Mm. But I like HTC, they're my You've still got, faves um, at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really... Yeah. It's <laughs> um, a lot of developers are, are working on all, all um, headsets. So, obviously, they, have a, they know which ones they prefer but they are making content for three or four different headsets at the same time. If um, we're yes. dabbling in we AR. We are dabbling. <laughs> but essentially, from where we're a startup, and it's an army of two at the moment, we've kind of focused on the fact that let's do VR marketing really well and make sure we're good at this and then move into AR yeah. rather than kind of just do like a, a half assed yeah. job at both. It's like is it Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec says, don't half ass two things whole ass one thing. So <laughs> we're just going whole ass into VR at the moment. Pretty much. <laughs> I love Parks and Rec. You had to put that in there, didn't you? <laughs> oh, no, I love it. Right, so first question. Um, frame rate is very important, but devs will be devs. Devs will always moan and be upset until something comes through perfect. But the great thing about developers is they're problem solvers. So they'll moan about a problem and they'll get upset and they'll fix it. And that's what's phenomenal about developers. But with frame rate, it's 60 frames per second is ideal at the moment. Um, I think someone, someone on the Oculus subreddit was saying the other day about 90 frames per second, whether or not that is currently viable. But as we were saying, we've still got six months to go until these mainstream releases of the big wired headsets. So we don't know. Devs will be devs, and they'll find a way, and they'll fix it. Um, Repeat the other question again. Uh, so the main ones people worry about are the screen door effect. So that's where you can you can obviously see you're in a virtual you're in a virtual world, but then the field of view isn't large enough, so you can like see the top of the headset where there's no screen. So that kind of it kicks you out of your virtual reality essentially because you've gone it grounds you and. If you're trying to escape into a new world, that isn't very good, really, for grounding. That appeals you. a lot to like the mobile um, VR headsets because, obviously, depending on the phone that you're using, um, for, say for example, I've got like a, an iPhone 5s or whatever it was, and that's too small for me to put into a headset. So I know I can see the size, and I'm like, nah, nah, I need something else. I need something bigger. Um, but yeah, sorry, button. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is latency. Latency is huge at the moment because, like, latency. I think it needs to be. It's like two milliseconds or something minute, because otherwise I'm going to turn my head and then the world's going to move and that going to be just sick. makes you feel really, really sick. So that's kind of, the, the key one for the moment, at the moment is latency, I find, because otherwise someone's going to look up, look down, look left, look right, and then it's all going to change and it's just going to completely throw you out of whack and make you feel unwell. Awesome. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you.